What's up, Matt's Garage? If I was uh, to describe how I'm feeling right now, I would go with uh, an amused emoji because this will be the umpteenth time I'm trying to get this Dana 44 set up. Um, I've tried and failed. I've come close, but close is no, there's no standard for these things. So what I'm doing today is I ordered a new set of Timken bearings because my setup bearings are Timken. What was happening before is I'd set everything up with the Timken bearings and then I'd go to do my final with my Koyo bearings and it was just way off. So I'm just trying to eliminate a variable. I really hope, I hope it works. If not, you might see a Bronco project for sale on Craigslist. I'm so over this axle. And can I just say thank you to Ford for inventing the nine inch? What, it's so much easier. Everything's adjustable. I mean, it's like night and day, you know, but this is what we got, so let's get to it. Just as before, I'm going to hit the bearing with a heat gun. Do not forget your oil slinger. I didn't quite get it. So ideally you want like a pipe to put over this, but I don't have one, so. Go until the slinger stops moving. Oh man, 30 minutes of that. I know my pinion depth stack up from before, which is these two shims here. I draw my pinion in, I've got my retech tool. 3.303 minus 0.6830. 2.62, okay. So I'm five thousandths too shallow. I'm gonna put a 10 thousandths shim in, or sorry, a 5 thousandths shim in. Right, dummy. Going in the wrong direction. 2.62, that's the same. Okay, good, holy smokes. I thought I was losing my mind. We'll go with that. No, I really want it to be at the checking depth. So I need to take five thousandths out. You know what though? Better deep than shallow. That's what I say. I'm keeping track of all my different attempts on this sheet because I'm finding I just lose my, my bearings. So with one I'm going to go pinion depth. Use the old race to drive that in. See how the sound changed? I got my shims in here. Got my setup race. Let's drop this bad boy in. on. Six thou. Pretty good. Tight. Nice and tight like a toy gun. I'm using Prussian blue for my marking compound. The pattern is broad, which is nice, but it's too far on the outside of the ring gear. Uh, the cosine looks good. Okay, so what I'm doing, babe, is I'm trying to get these gears and these gears to mesh up perfectly, okay? See that pinion gear that's in there, that big gear in the center there? Yeah, yeah. The pattern is now at the bottom of the tooth on this side, and it's high on this side. 
Okay, so this is a file that up. It's a little dirty, so I need to just clean the whole paint off. Off. So now that I've got this thinner shim in there, we're going to put these back in. Okay, we're going to do the same thing we did before. 8.30 to me. Okay, got it. Okay. Minus. Minus. 0 0.6795. Point, point six, seven, nine, five, right? Yeah. 6795. Okay. Equals 3.6235. Okay, so now we're at 3. What's up, brother? Just wash How'd you do it? What'd you get? Anything? Yep. Huh? I forgot to eat my bar. Did you get uh, <laughs> any skills? Uh, nah, nah. Yeah. Any better, though? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, see, so now I've got these gears marked up with this gunk, right? Not gunk, paint. Well, it's, it's marking compound. So now I go like this, and I yeah, put drag on it, and I send it through there, and Wait, then I it send any, it back. Does it have any drag thing? Or back? No, no. I didn't check the backlash because it, it hasn't changed. Why are you so. putting your hand there? To give it some extra drag. Because once you have okay. once you have the thing on it, it'll have the drag. Okay. So now you look at the pattern, you see it's more in the middle. Keep it? I think you can keep it. Nice and broad all the way across. See that one? It's like all the way across. Yeah, I get it. Okay, what do you think? That's right in the middle. It's nice and broad. The backside is a little bit towards the outside, but still, I mean you see how far down that goes. Well, it took me four more tries after my daughter helped me. And I'm finally, what I did, I went back and I looked at the pictures from the way it came from Yukon. Even, see that? Even Steven? Even. And then high on the other side, a little high. So that is how it looked. Uh, in the factory photo, so that's good enough for me. All right, so where I'm at right now is I've got the pinion in there, hopefully for the last time, and um, I've got 70,000 shim for the preload. So uh, that's good. I've got another, i got a new yoke on order. The surface on that yoke's not bad, the used yoke, but I just don't want... I don't want to have any leaks, so for 40 bucks or whatever from Tom's Bronco Parts, I was like, forget about it. It's not worth it to not do it. And what I want to do is introduce preload and test fit it to see if I've got the right amount of backlash. So I'm actually only putting in eight thousandths. My pattern is still good, thank goodness. So I'm going to take this off, press on my permanent bearings. Hey, just a little tip. Um, when you go to press your bearings on, make sure you've got the right side shimmed. Don't ask me how I know. So, I undid that debacle. I got the right shims on the right side, and it's going in very similarly to how it was when it was the setup bearings. There's a point here where my gears are stinking. And that tells me that, you no. Know, not enough backlash, see that? Alright, so I pressed both these bearings off using the um, homemade uh, bearing puller. I'm going to flash up a card for here, an info card here for. And I moved the 75, sorry, 75 thousandths shim over from one side to another. So, I wish I could say this was the last time I had to do that, but one, I don't have that much confidence. Two, um, I have to pull this out to do the pinion preload. And look, guys, I'm sorry I don't have a lot of energy, at, you know, like motor train channel, yay, but dude, this is, this is no joke. The money you spend to have this done. I'm going to tell you right now, it's worth it. 
I'm not saying don't do it yourselves. You should because you can. But having it done by somebody else is worth it. Now having said that, I hear a lot of horror stories from guys who say that they get it done and the guy's screwed up anyway. It's no surprise, right? Because they have, they have so many hours to get this done. Alright, that sounds much healthier. I'm at six and a half, so it's, that's great. Let's take it around the circle. Another time. It's amazing, right? Even when you use setup bearings of the same brand, there's no guarantee that you will get a consistent result. So you really do need to buy that clamshell puller because my janky bearing puller, it could, I mean, it hasn't damaged the bearings, but it could easily damage the bearings. Yeah, nice and round in the middle. Pattern's good, man. Really not, not mad at the pattern here. I'm not gonna show you though, you just have to believe me. Oh, relax, I'll show you the pattern, jeez. Coast side, nice and centered. Drive side, it's a little faint, can't see it, but it's centered, so. I got a good pattern, Captain. Ladies and gents, I'm calling success. I still haven't set my pinion preload, but if I screw that up again, I, I just can't see it. I kind of get it now. So I took a big risk with this series because honestly, it's who's even going to watch? I'm like, I swear, no one's going to watch this, but this is what it is really like to set up a Dana 44 for the first time with just internet and book knowledge. I mean, it is intense, man. I mean, my back is killing me. I probably ordered two, I mean, including the master kit, two and a half sets of bearings to get this done. My lessons learned are this, okay? Set up bearings, make sure they're the same brand as your real bearings. Uh, it doesn't guarantee a fit, but you saw there at the end, I only, if I had put the shims on the correct side, I only had to take the bearings off one additional time, the real bearings off one time to get the backlash perfect. Um, I probably wouldn't have had to do that had I not put my backlash tolerance so close the first time. Uh, other things I learned is really try to nail that nominal depth. You want to get as close to that 2625 as possible. Uh, and then, you know, I think in the end I was within a thousandth of that. So that really is the key, man. You got to get that pinion depth there. The backlash you can work out. Uh, pinion preload. The lesson learned there is, uh, you know, again, use the same bearing as your setup bearing and um, it sneaks up on you really fast. So you almost want no preload until you get to like 150 foot pounds. Actually, like even then you barely want any preload. You, you want no drag until you get up close. And then once you get up, the difference between 180 and 200 foot pounds, it's a huge amount of difference in the preload. So be careful about that. Um, don't forget to drag your seals in. You're gonna have to undo all of it. And yeah, that's it. That's my Data 44 build. Wow, I mean, holy smokes guys, that was, that was something else on Matt's Garage. I'll see you next time.